Hola de nuevo, 12 en punto en Barcelona. Estamos aquí después de la interesante charla con Richard Bowling, esperando a cuatro mujeres de tres continentes distintos que nos darán su visión sobre un tema muy interesante, que es el liderazgo y el rol de la mujer en las zonas económicas, aquí en Be New Economic Zones. Tendremos a Claudia Pellerano, de República Dominicana, Sandra Esmale, de Letonia, Camila Moreno, de Colombia, y Ilham Khalil, de Marruecos. Y para moderarlas, a todas ellas, tenemos a la presencia de Kearney Fingar. Ella es, eh, es, es jefa de redacción del New Statements Media Group. Thanks for coming. Thank Welcome, Kearney. Thank you. All yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thanks to you all for tuning in. And most of all, thank you for the opportunity to lead this among other panels with my most sincere gratitude to Blanca Sariga, Director General of Barcelona Free Zone, for allowing my participation. Well, the topic of this panel uh, is one that I, I have to admit that I, I sometimes uh, shy away from because I think the issue of, of gender equality and the role of women in leadership positions is extremely important. I always worry sometimes that it, uh, that it becomes just a talking shop and, and, and how can we actually put words into action and, and sometimes we just talk about these topics and everybody feels good that the topic was on the agenda and we don't really know how to actually change things in practical terms. Um, that said, I'm hoping that the um, really actually powerful and successful women that we've uh, assembled for this discussion can help us do that. And so I will invite the panelists to actually really just be as candid as possible and, and help me uh, think, I guess, critically and pragmatically about what we can do to help promote women in the free zone industry and in the wider world in the industries that the free zones are operating. In. So I'll just tell you very quickly, you heard the names of our illustrious panel of women, but to place into context why they were selected for this really important and, and slightly difficult discussion, um, Ilham uh, Khalil is director of the Tanger Free Zone, which is the industrial platform of Tanger Med Zone, so actually very successful zone in Morocco, and I believe that she was the first director of Africa's first free zone, so highly significant there. Maria Camilla Marino is executive director of the Free Zone Association of the Americas, so in a leader pos leadership position for an association and, and achieved that position at a very young age. Claudia Pellerano is president of the Industrial Free Zone of the Americas in the Dominican Republic. Again, a notable position in an important free zone in Latin America. Sandra Esmale is CEO of Resigny, Special Economic Zone Authority in Latvia. And again, she was among the first women to have such a position in her country and in her region um, and has been um, doing that for some 15 years. Probably has some war stories to share with us. And I want to, again, encourage um, the women on our panel to share your personal experiences as well as talk about and tackle some of these big themes that we have. I would like to invite each of you um, to first maybe give your headline thoughts a couple minutes on um, opening Gambit. And that would be, you know, to start from your own personal experience and tell how it's been for all of you to break through barriers, because all of you have in one way or another, and what challenges have you faced. Um, so I'd like to begin with Ilham, if I may. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. Um, and uh, basically, I'd like, first of all, to uh, uh, give a thank you to the organization for giving us this opportunity to um, share our experience and really talk about this uh, very passionate subject. As per my personal experience in um, where, where, where I am today, I started my journey in Tangemed 11 years ago, and I was only 26 years old. So it was uh, quite uh, an interesting um, experience in the sense that I was I joined the group uh, to uh, in the business development managers, and only three years later, I was head of the free tri the free zone Tangier free zone. And of course, I had I was very lucky in in the sense that. Uh, 
the academic um, background and I had a, the help of a lot of people around uh, surrounding me. But of course, I was uh, very curious to, um, to join this uh, challenge uh, in the sense that uh, it was a, a big project for this part of the world. I mean, Saint Germain was game changing for Morocco and for the whole continent. There was, there will, it's gonna be a port and the free trade zones surrounding the port that will impact economically, uh, uh, socially, the whole uh, population. And I was going to be a part of it. So it was really a big challenge. And uh, uh, through the way, I learned a lot. And uh, basically, I was very lucky to uh, be heading this kind of, uh, of challenge. Um, but the the way was not very easy. It was um, a kind of, I had to uh, tackle myself to understand that I was given a very big responsibility, but not because I am a woman, but it's just because um, I had to be on the right place for this to happen. And uh, I really appreciated the, um, the journey uh, as far as 11 years already. And of course, uh, this panel is not the right one to um, talk about the, um, the benefits and why economic zones exist and the, the whole impact they have on, on of course, the, uh, the, the society today in Morocco. Because there will be another panel very specifically for that and my colleagues will tackle the subject. But the most important thing as per today and the um, I can proudly say that as a woman, being head of the free trade zone um, gave me the opportunity to pave the way for other women and where I had a chance to participate in, in different, I will say, platforms as the, uh, the uh, African Women Leadership Summit. And uh, it was really very rewarding for myself to give feedback about the whole process, the good and the bad of it. and. Uh, and it was very hopeful for me also to see that more and more women are interested into uh, participating in, in this environment. So yeah, it was a quite challenging, but a very rewarding uh, position I am in today, and I'm very lucky. Thank you very much. And some of the themes that you've mentioned already, I mean, I think age, for example, is a, is a kind of additional challenge, I think, for younger women in, in senior positions, which, which we will address. Also, there are regional and cultural differences, even if the challenges are in some ways universal. There's a lot that we'll need to unpack, but I'd like to hear from Sandra, if I may, as mentioned, that you were given a a leadership position at a time when it wasn't necessarily the norm. Um, so tell us how it was for you um, and how you reached such a position and, and what challenges you faced. Sandra? Oh, I think we're not hearing you. Uh, yes. There we go. Sorry. No problem. Sorry. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, express my gratitude for, for inviting uh, to this panel. Uh, and um, uh, I would like to start by saying that I am living in um, and working in Latvia, uh, which is located uh, in Europe. And uh, European Union is a global leader um, in the field of gender equality. Uh, and has made uh, significant progress in recent decades. Um, uh, in Latvia, too, uh, women hold an um, important place uh, in the labor market and actively participate in economic and political decision making. Uh, for example, according to uh, Eurostat, uh, in 2019, the largest share of women among managerial positions is recorded in Latvia, uh, 56%. Uh, and at the EU level, about a set of managers are women, uh, and this year remains stable since 2012. Um, the similar proportion is also observed in uh, leading positions in free zones in Latvia. Um, uh, when I starting, uh, started working uh, as the chairman, chairwoman um, of the board in the Resigne Special Economic Zone, uh, it was more than 10 years ago. Um, uh, uh, I was only a female manager among four special economic zones and freeport in Latvia. 
uh, but currently there are five zones in Latvia and two women leaders uh, in them. Mm, the biggest challenge um, when starting uh, the job uh, were related uh, to the need to introduce significant changes in the resident special economic zone and improve its performance. Um, everything went as planned uh, and gradually both uh, resident special economic zone uh, and also IS its manager uh, were taken more and more seriously both among colleagues in other free zones uh, and uh, in national level institutions. The biggest challenge um, in the coming years uh, is to improve um, the quality of service delivery uh, and keep up with the changing times. Um, also, st uh, st there still exist uh, gender stereotypes in Latvia. Um, as a manager, I have not felt much of them uh, when communicating uh, managers of enterprises, uh, institutions uh, and other free zones in Latvia. Um, I have been treated uh, with dignity um, as an equal person uh, whose position is being here. And there have been exceptions, but relatively few. Uh, however, I can say that women in sectors uh, that are not typically women's sectors must be doubled good, uh, doubled smart and double minded um, in order to achieve what men take for granted. Uh, uh, my biggest challenge as a female leader uh, has been uh, to balance work and family life. Uh, and I think that uh, this is common for all women leaders. Um, in Latvia, um, there is a lack of flexible employment schemes and childcare facilities. Uh, this often doubles the workload for women um, as they are generally considered uh, to be main care providers uh, compared to the men. Um, it has been the same for me. Uh, because the work has taken uh, long hours and uh, therefore special care had to be taken uh, for quality of time spent uh, with my family. Um, and finally, I would like to emphasize um, that there are many advantages uh, of being a female leader uh, because at present uh, the functions of manager require a great deal uh, of diversity uh, as well as different approach of things um, and as a result, uh, the role of women in every field is growing today. Um, in business, uh, politics uh, and society as a whole, um, we can uh, only reach our uh, full potential if we uh, use all our talents and diversity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And this point about the... Um, domestic, I guess, responsibilities and, and the need for flexibility and the, and the need for employers to be able to provide arrangements that will allow female leaders to, uh, I hate to use the phrase balance work and home life, but that's what it amounts to. Um, I think related to that is the challenge of it has to begin from the correct balance in the home as well, and that's a whole other <laughs> uh, big and uh, quite uh, thorny subject. But thank you for sharing your experiences. I'd like to turn now to uh, Claudia to give us a bit of a, a Latin America perspective and tell us a little bit about uh, what your experiences have been and, and any challenges faced. Well, as, as thank you so much for having me in the panel. As you mentioned before, I'm the president of Las Americas Industrial Free Zone in the Dominican Republic, it's in the center of the Caribbean. Um, in my case, uh, I've come to see that the beginning of each stage in our lives as women brings a challenge and, and a barrier to be broken. Um, when you see it in childhood, it means they need to dare to be different. And during adolescence and young adulthood, it's proving yourself to be uh, better or competitive enough to be exposed to the right opportunities. Um, when you go into adulthood, then being accepted and followed as a leader under your own terms, being a female leader is different. And above all, doing all of this while well, usually being uh, once harsher critic, uh, in part because of the society that we were brought up in and uh, handling family life and professional life, where women tend to carry a heavier load, it makes it all that much difficult. Uh, in my case, as, as a child, I was uh, 
He was being interested in topics that weren't traditionally related to girls. Uh, I liked disassembling these little uh, music boxes uh, just to understand how they worked. Um, I wanted to have a motorbike and uh, got a little feminine bike with this little flower in the front. Uh, I wanted to be in karate lessons and uh, they uh, uh, registered me in ballet classes the next day. So you do grow having to be different uh, from the start. And it all comes down to um, there is a barrier to break and we just need to, to dare to be different there. Uh, but we need the support of the ones that's around us. Um, I had the privilege of having a father that was very forward thinking for his time and uh, raised me as a person and not necessarily as a girl. So that helped me very much and I'm aware that, um, that I'm privileged in that regard. Um, I selected computer engineering as my major in college, which also came <laughs> with, with quite uh, their own challenges. Um, like getting to, to the university the first day and being told by a teacher that I must have been in the wrong classroom because that was an electric engineering class. Uh, and um, that with my presence, I could probably be very good at interior decorating. Um, then later on, that same teacher uh, brought the fact that women have nothing to look for in a physics lab. Um, so all these things just get you thinking as to what, what is out there and what you need to bring to the table to be uh, contemplated as part of the solutions. Um, I, when I started growing in my profession, I started in telecommunications quite a few years ago, we're not counting. Um, the men that I supervise would prefer to stay up through the night trying to solve a problem instead of calling me to get help. Uh, and basically that was because to them it was degrading to call their young and female boss to ask them for help. So this was something uh, that showed me that I had to be patient but to be accepted as a peer and as a leader, uh, I had to prove myself harder and longer than my, my male and that was that was very clear. But something that I did see is that once that barrier was broken, then the bonds were a lot stronger and uh, and lasted longer than what I could see in, in the general situations. Mm -hmm. When I became a part of the free zone sector close to 25 years ago, it was definitely a man's world, uh, where women were mostly focused on HR support and very clerical uh, support positions. Then, um, in my case, I was in charge of special projects and sales, um, and that exposed me extremely uh, to extreme diverse situations. I remember, for example, uh, with an international client who could not even acknowledge that I was seated at a table, and that my answers had to be repeated by my boss, who was male, so he could see the information as viable. So, um, when you add that and you get to the stages of marriage and motherhood, uh, they bring their own challenges. So uh, being a working wife and mother came with very specific expectations, not only from society, but from myself. And I think that is very generalized among, among mothers. Um, so it took me a time, some time to understand that it was okay to be a working mom, a techie kind of mom, as my kids uh, tell me instead of a brownie mom that would be able to participate at school every day. Mm -hmm. So um, surprisingly, I would get the approval easier from men in some points at, in the free zone sector and for the kids instead of other moms and other female employees. So I think that it's very important that women need to support each other. Mm -hmm. I believe very much in the strategy of uh, proving uh, um, that we are different instead of focusing only on the fact that we need to prove that we're equals. Our differences is what makes it so important. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's bringing up to the table a different way of doing things, a different uh, approach in a collaborative way. Um, so we need to be different. We need to dare to be different and be accepted. Thank you. I think this point about how women can best support um, each other is something that we will certainly um, come back to. And one of the benefits of having uh, people such as yourself that have blasted through some of these barriers already is that you do carve a path for some of the younger women 
to then come through, step through the, the glass that you shattered already. Um, and one of them is Maria Camilla. And uh, I'd really like you especially to tell us about the intersectionality of being both a woman and, and young and achieving a position um, at a young age and perhaps what dual challenges that might pose. Thank you very much. Well, I'm super, super happy to be today with only women. Uh, from my experiences that almost all, all of the panels are with men. So this is the first time that I share a panel with women. Um, and we're here in the first place being very, very lucky because unfortunately, yes, there's uh, more, more and more time that there's more opportunity for women. But the ones that reach to the to the to the top, it's even less. So we're we're very lucky to be here, and I and I feel privileged. I started my career. Um, also, I had my uh, the opportunity, like Claudia, to have. Uh, I was raised my by my by my dad. So it, the perspective, I think, being raised by a dad than by a mother is different. So. Uh, he was always encouraging me to do whatever I would like to do in life. Um, I wanted to go to China when I was 18 and I was seen crazy at my school because everyone just wanted to do their, their master in the US or in Canada or in Europe and I, and I was the only one dreaming about uh, China. And that was the first shock uh, being, and sorry to finger point uh, the specific country, but it, it was not an it, it was not an easy uh, country to be to to be a working woman there. But well, I, I started um, to to face these these different challenges and to meet other people, other women that wanted to to create your 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 path. So um, there and and after I started uh, being the executive director of the association at my uh, 28 years old, uh, where I manage 25 countries, which are 25 different uh, cultures, and where the majority obviously are men right now in the economic zone sector. Uh, so it was a very big challenge just to feel that I fit and to convince myself and to be confident that I was made for that job because I felt, okay, this is a men-oriented um, sector, I'm too young, and uh, how to prove myself and to how to prove others that I was made for this job. Um, and not only to men, but there, there's some anecdotes that I wanted to, to highlight, uh, talking about barriers that is never, maybe it's not that, that often talked, but you're 20, 28 years old, single and Colombian, asked for a visa to do a business uh, travel. It was, I was denied almost three times for visas because I didn't have a good profile. So that was like very shocking and, and it was a huge barrier that I, that I had to look at myself like, what's the problem that I'm a woman, young and single? Why I cannot like be a businesswoman traveling around the world? And, and that was one of the most challenging for myself and to, to continue working and believe on myself and continue traveling and meet people and meet uh, men um, around the world. And now I, I, I feel more confident, but it took me like, to be honest, like four years to, to, chat, to start um, breaking these barriers. Thank you, and I can you. certainly can relate to some of those experiences. I think we probably all had those moments where maybe arrived off a plane and they were uh, waiting for a Mr. Fingar with great fanfare, um, expecting maybe my dad to arrive in, instead of me. Um, as, as, as you get older, there are new challenges that arise, but then at least it's, it's um, I guess you, you gain and you fight for your credibility over time, um, even if there are new um, new challenges that arise, but I think those experiences by starting out young, they help give you quite a lot of fortitude um, to, to be able to pursue your career. One thing I would um, 
like us to discuss a little bit is how do we engage um, our male colleagues, employers, even partners in this discussion? Um, how, how best to engage them without it descending into what they would view as a male bashing. This is always a, a kind of risk with this topic, quite a frustrating risk, actually. Um, and on the other hand, how can we best um, advise other women on how we can take control of the situations ourselves without getting into blaming women for structural barriers that they didn't create? Um, create? I think it's a very difficult balance, and I would love to hear... Um, what any of you think about that. Perhaps some Claudia, because this is something that you raised the issue of women supporting each other, and I think that there are certainly things that women can do different and ways that they can empower themselves, um, but how do we do that without kind of blaming them for a system that wasn't necessarily of, of our making? Well, I, I'm a firm believer that, um, that equality comes not only by women going out and defending it, but really uh, educating the whole society in that um, that, it, that that is the right thing and that's the right direction to take. Um, I believe that us as women, we, we can influence in two different ways. Currently, uh, the present, uh, by supporting other women and bringing our differences to the table as something that actually contributes to the teams, to the solutions, instead of trying to prove that we can be equal, it's really focusing on what makes us different, what makes us stand out. Uh, women in general, we are extremely uh, good multitaskers. We have very good uh, interpersonal exchanges and, and, and relations. Um, we can be very quick on our feet. We can. There's a lot of positive things that we have that bring that comes out of the, our nature as a woman that when we come into teams, um, if you give yourself the chance and if you decide to um, really go for that and bring yourself up to both succeed but also fail and learn, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that we're not all that used to doing, uh, you'll see that in those teams you are accepted once they see that difference, that different scope of things, that different ways of doing things, and definitely it helps getting uh, different results. I think that bringing men into this discussion is important. We, we can change by supporting what is there now, but we can form our daughters and our sons. We continue to say that we need to, to uh, raise strong daughters, uh, but we need to raise strong and open-minded kids uh, and young people. So. I believe that men need to be a part of this discussion just as much. Uh, we can't blame them. I have to be honest. In many places, I have received much more, um, uh, let's say, distancing and questioning from women than from men. Mm -hmm. So um, I have had the experience of that in the professional field. I can more easily be accepted now that, that um, I feel comfortable enough with myself to do so, uh, to be accepted by the men uh, in many, and supported by the men than many women. We need to make sure that we understand that we are in a relay race and in the same team. So uh, we've gotten this far because there have been a lot prior to us that have done a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means that we need to be responsible and committed to letting ourselves be the base for the ones that are coming behind us. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that gathering both sides, looking at things and how we can bring differences to the table that will help us mm -hmm. uh, will definitely set the pace for the ones that are coming later. We need to uh, mentor and we need to be able to multiply that uh, down the, the hierarchy of our institutions. Thank you, thank you. And um, Ilham, what, what do you make of what you've heard so far and, and in your opinion, how do we balance this need to get our, our male colleagues to um, engage in this issue and do their part and, and what is our part in it all? I think that as per today, there is a lot of conversation surrounding the uh, this, this subject. The, 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 the topic and the scope is big, but uh, really, um, Claudia did narrow it down to a very interesting key takeaways. The first one is that we have to team together, men and women, 
to actually work together and show the way to the next generation of women that are at third today asking themselves how they can be the next generation of, of leaders. And uh, unfortunately, there is not a user manual to, uh, such, to, to get to such a thing. And uh, um, there is no one unique way to be a, a leader as per today for men and women. And uh, the, the only way is to just ask yourself, is it, is it really what you want to do? Uh, in, probably for the, your entire professional life, to, to, to go through a lot of struggles and the same problems uh, that will unfortunately not disappear from a day to another. Um, I wish I could say that gender equality it will be over in the next years, but unfortunately the metrics are here to show otherwise. Only 7% uh, I've heard of, of, of women are in the Fortune CEO today, and we are only represented by 25% of women in global parliaments. And you know that in our ecosystem, we're trying to um, make a change by proving that we have our place in, in the table and we want to help others to grow their potential, their power, and we have to get together, men and women, to just not talk about uh, the way to do it, but just to talk about the urge and the necessity to make it the new normal. And the um, this is the way uh, I, I, this is what worked for me actually in, in my professional career so far. And I think that we have to uh, keep up with this. And uh, I, yeah, this is, um, I, I go by this day by day, one day at a time. Sometimes it's the struggle is there, and it's not gonna go away from a day to to another. But still, very very rewarding. Thank you. And Sandra, can we have your opinion on this as well? Oh, we can't hear you. There we go. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much uh, for question. Um, uh, I would like to say that um, maybe uh, in our country is uh, much easier uh, because uh, historic historically uh, women in Latvia have a high level of uh, employment and high labor market uh, participation rate. Um, there is also strong traditions uh, for women uh, with young children to reconcile work and family life. Um, and uh, therefore, um, at present, uh, as I said before, 32% um, of women work uh, on the boards uh, of the largest companies in Latvia. Um, of course, um, as I mentioned, um, 10 years ago, the situation uh, was different, um, maybe, uh, because um, I was only a woman head of uh, a free zone in Latvia, uh, but uh, now this number is doubled. Um, um, and let's say that, um, um, yes, also when I started working in a resign special economic zone, there were no women among the managers of our companies, but now there are several uh, women managers. Uh, for example, including the manager of largest company of a uh, resident special economic zone, which produce um, unique uh, large sized uh, birch plywood. And I, before these discussions, um, I just uh, talked with um, uh, this woman um, um, and uh, we just um, uh, said, uh, we agreed that um, uh, to be women, uh, women uh, leader uh, is this, um, uh, sometimes also um, advantage uh, because um, it's always uh, you can uh, bring into discussions um, different uh, way of thinking, um, a different uh, way of uh, way of uh, solving uh, uh, problems. Uh, and uh, our in our country, uh, men are um, um, men are, are uh, also listening to his dignity, and it is very important. Uh, very important uh, to make the, uh, good discussions and uh, good col collaboration in, within the team. Uh, 
Um, yes, and uh, I would like just to add that also our companies uh, have supportive uh, measures uh, or initiatives uh, uh, to attract women uh, simply uh, and various level of company management and uh, for uh, some examples of good practice include uh, uh, monitoring of specific indicators and uh, gender, uh, gender mainstreaming uh, in company internal documents uh, and others. Um, yes, uh, therefore I can say that uh, maybe the situation is a little bit different uh, in, uh, in our country because um, it is typically that uh, uh, women are working uh, in management level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For sure there are some regional differences, um, although sometimes I find that they are quite surprising in places that perhaps that you might go and expect to have more backwards views on gender um, actually are more advanced than many Western countries believe them to be. Likewise, in my own, I should say anecdotally, my own personal experience, probably the most egregious experiences I've had have all happened uh, in the UK and not out in the field, in the dozens of, of countries um, where where I have have worked, um, uh, Maria Camille, I'd like to hear what you make of what you've heard so far, and perhaps you could also add whether do you see a difference? There's a in in your contemporaries because there is a general belief that perhaps each generation gets a bit more progressive, a bit more open-minded. Do you believe that to be true? Yeah. Well, I, I want to bring um, a book that I really, really recommend, that uh, really helped me on my career path. And it takes some things that, we, that has been discussed here, and it's my, my takeaway. So the first one is, is four main uh, messages and that I would like to, to, um, to express to my, to, to my generation as well. The first one is to sit at the table. Sometimes we feel not that confident to sit at the table, and it's it's not only um, it's literally. So sometimes you get to a meeting and you wait that everyone and the, the the men sit, and then you see which spot it's left in order for you to sit. Um, that 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 doesn't happen at all with the men. The men actually sit at the table. So it's to feel more confident about who you are, what you can give to society. Uh, the second one that uh, you were asking and that uh, uh, they, they have more um, experience because I'm, I'm not married, but I can, I can see it on my friends and some of my friends and on, on some colleagues, is make your partner a real partner. Uh, a woman actually works, uh, has two or even three jobs when they're like mother and then uh, support the house and then the man at the end, they only have one job. So you really, if, if, if and, and this is one of the advices that I would like to give to my generation is that if you really want to get up and to be more successful or to have uh, gender equality, you also need to have a partner that support that. Um, and unfortunately, on my on my uh, Latino side, it's, 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 a, it's a little bit more more difficult. Um, the other one is don't leave before you leave, because sometimes you, you 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 for example, you're not even married, but you're saying I'm not going to ask for this uh, promotion. I'm not going to do this project because I have these plans, and then you just wait someday to get pregnant in order not to do that project that you will dream about it. Uh, so you're leaving before before time. And the last one is to, as Claudia, Claudia was mentioning, uh, is to raise your kids um, to, usually you raise your the man to be brave and the woman to be perfect or to help others, to be kind. And then the man is the one that can be strong, assertive, the negotiator. Uh, so it's it's to raise your kids in an equal in an equal way, and to raise them both both to be both brave. Um, so that's that's my takeaways that I will uh, recap from from the different point of views and what I will suggest or 
as my personal experience, this book that I read, that I'm, uh, it's from uh, the CFO of Facebook, from Charlie Sandberg, who was a turning point in my professional career. Thank you very much. I, I like your advice about the taking the seat at the table. And so perhaps, you know, I think, and this is where the, I think women themselves can try to um, have the confidence in, in themselves. Um, being raised with confidence helps a lot, but if not, trying to instill the confidence in yourself. And if there isn't a chair already at the table, drag one from somewhere else and <laughs> barge it barge in there and put the table, I mean, put the chair there at the table and believe that you belong there. I think that's actually very good advice. Have we questions from the audience to pass me? Thank you. And uh, by the way, thank you to the audience uh, for those who are sharing questions and for those who are tuning in. A question for our group. How do you see, as women, the future of, ec of the economic zone sector? Do you think it will become more inclusive? As many of you mentioned, it, it's been a kind of man's world in the free zone sector. Is it changing? And do you think in the future we'll see even more inclusivity? And this is for any of you who'd like to weigh in on this. Oh. If, if I may just suggest that uh, um, actually um, as for today the good the good question to ask is um, is it that we are already showing that it's a game changing for the sector the economic zones the impact of economic zones on on the life of so many women is today a reality and it will be on, 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 on the year coming for sure. Um, how we can get more women to participate in, 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 in this sector is a big question and I think that there is no, uh, not a single, I will say, way of doing it, but the, um, the best way is to show that it's, uh, I will say, not something trivial because it is something complicated, but that uh, the proof that it is possible is this marvelous panel that I am proud to be um, part of. But uh, we are not the exception, and I can say that. I mean, the it, it's it takes only like the uh, the vulnerability first to say that it is something possible for all women today, and. Um, not specifically in economic zones, because the, if it was something specific to economic zones that we will see that the problem is quite uh, uh, punctual, but it is uh, today the, um, the, uh, the, the topic everywhere and the, the scope is quite uh, big today. Uh, I think that uh, speaking our mind and be a little bit more in the communication side and not on, in the operational side will help a lot of women get interested and uh, take a seat at the table. Because it's okay to think that you don't have your place, that all the days will be bright. But um, once you get the confidence and you participate, the reward for that is is amazing, and it could change the way you um, you actually tackle other problems, not in the professional, also uh, not only in the professional, uh, I will say, uh, environment. Thank you, uh, Claudia. Were you wanting to add something to that? Here, just a second. Um, uh, yes, I, I want to say that I do feel that we continue to improve, and that I feel that. Uh, more and more companies and their respective executives are very involved uh, in including women and in having more participation. And what I'm seeing is the intention of trying to get participation in the different levels uh, of companies. It, what you see uh, in countries like ours, for example, there's more than 50% participation in the base uh, of the employees and the basic worker in the plant. But then when you go to technical positions, that's only about 34% uh, 
uh, the presence of women. And then when you go to heads of companies, it's only 3%. So we are losing our women along the way. They're not being able to, uh, to go and go up the chain. And uh, it has a lot to do with um, the effect that both uh, family, but also motherhood has on this and on, on, on us women. And one of the topics that, that I mentioned uh, at, at a moment where we exchanged previously was just look at the effect, the different effect that the pandemic has had in the female labor force compared to the male. Uh, because schools are closed, because high-risk patients and, and family members need to be taken care of, more and more women are resigning from their posts, are giving up their positions because they are expected to stay home to take care of both the kids and the elderly. So by the time that they're still at home, uh, the male counterparts continue to grow within the companies. So um, for us as women who can see this happening, that those are the kinds of things that we can get involved in that we are doing. Before, probably it was something that people didn't pay a lot of, in, um, of attention to, but right now we have companies and executives, male and female executives, involved in seeing how we can level that out and what kind of preferential treatment uh, the person could get when you're going back to work, making sure that they go in, not in the bottom of the ladder, but in the same stage where they left. Uh, and it's a way of reducing that salary gap that continues to increase and also to help maintain the presence of the women in, in the labor force that it has been so hard to get. But I do see that there is that there, uh, that there is growth and there there is more conscious from both men and women, but it's it's our turn and it's our responsibility to bring it up because in many cha many cases uh, they're not really seeing it. But when we bring it up, they take it as a point and we work together. So I think that being able to see and being able to communicate what is not right is probably the first step to being able to to make that change. Thank you very much. And for sure, it, it does seem that the, the COVID crisis, it accentuated a lot of divides. We talk a lot about the digital divide that was shown um, between people who can work from home and those with roles who can't. But it also highlighted, I think, the, the gender workload divide and, and brought those home responsibilities to the fore. And so the responsibility is certainly on employers uh, to make sure that their female um, employees are, are able to do the work they need and to give the support they need and accept that things have changed and adapt. Ladies, thank you very much for sharing your insights. I wish we could talk more um, because there are a lot of uh, fascinating uh, sub-threads to this topic that I wish we could get into, but perhaps another time. Thank you, though. Okay, so let's sit on the table, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thank you very much, Claudia, Ilham, Sandra, Camila y Courtney, for being here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Gracias a todos vosotros por haber asistido aquí físicamente. Gracias a todos los que estáis digitalmente. Volvemos en, en unos momentos, gracias a Servi Habitat, también nuestro patrocinador. Volvemos en unos momentos con la primera eh, inspirational talk que haremos aquí en Be New Economic Zones. Os esperamos en 10 minutos, será más o menos de publicidad. ¿De acuerdo? Hasta ahorita.